love those noises. It just makes me smile. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. On this rainy day. Um, this week and next week, uh, Pastor Reverend Bray is going to be on vacation. I'm hoping that they have nice weather. I'm hoping they're going to be at the lake and enjoy their, their fun, happy place. Uh, today, Patty Wessenberg is going to share the message with us. And next week, Troy Mason is going to share the message with us. So I invite you all to come back next week to hear that message and, and smile at Patty a lot because she's nervous. <laughs> Um, the announcements, if you watch the announcements while Fred was playing, there's a ladies' lunch, luncheon on July 16th. There's also, is it Patty, who's an elder, should be that morning too, isn't there? No, it was skipping July. It was skipping, okay. So just the luncheon after church on, the, on July 16th. And then on July 23rd, we're having a picnic in the park at the lake. This is something we haven't done in a long, long time. And Pastor found a place that she really thinks will like. It's called Wiregrass Lake Metro Park. And it's in Holland. I think I saw an entrance to it off the Port Royal, but I'm not positive as I was driving in. Um, worship's going to begin at 1045 that day. And it's going to have a picnic lunch. They're going to furnish hot dogs and hamburgers at churches. And the rest of us need to bring a beverage and a dish to pass. So. There we are. Uh, any other announcements from anybody? Okay, then as you are able, please stand and join with me in the call to worship. Welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. And may the joy we have in our Lord Jesus Christ become your joy also. Thanks be to God who has welcomed each one of us. Let us extend that same loving welcome to others. Amen. Our opening hymn is My Hope is Built. <laughs> Lies within us. 
Make your ways known to us. Show us the path on which we should walk. <clears throat> Lead us in your truth and teach us. Open our ears so that we will hear and receive your guidance shared with us today. In the music that Fred and Megan have given us. And the scripture and the message that Patty will bring to us. And the slides and the presentation that Karen did and John with the sound. We give you thanks for each of them. As we worship, remind us that you alone are God who saves and God in whom we trust. Open us to share in the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, Lord, Lord, Lord God, God, how will be done to me that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in hell. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And we stop. Westenberg is no stranger to anybody in this room, except maybe one. And she is, wears lots of hats within this congregation and has done much to hold the congregation together as we've traveled the routes we've traveled. And I, for one, am grateful that she's willing to bring the message today. And good morning and welcome, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I really feel privileged to be here with all of you today, so I'm happy to see so many people. You know, we, we just really, as elders at least, our group, wanted Pastor to get away and not have to worry about anything because typically her days off involve some sort of service to somebody. So we don't know what she's doing at this moment, but I hope it's extremely joyful. Um, so, we used to uh, do services down at the rescue mission, some of you remember that, and I thought I'll just resurrect a sermon I did down there once and I'll be all set, but as I reviewed it, it was not really appropriate, not really designed for, so anyway, with God's help, I think I put together something maybe a little more meaningful. So my scripture today is built into what I'm going to talk about. It's Psalm 1. The topic is destiny, our walk with God. Bear with me while I read to you something from a speech made by Abraham Lincoln back in 1863. In his speech, he said, We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. So, wow. These insightful words are certainly applicable to us in our world today. Have we, mankind, forgotten that it's God's grace that brought us the success the creature comforts, the enrichment to all of our lives. Have we lost the need to preserve grace? We see church attendance diminishing, while other activities often take over Sunday worship time. Corruption in our government, violence in the streets, I mean, I could go on. But the point is, are we losing our connection with God as a people in general? <laughs> We're here functioning on this earth for a very short time. How do we make the most of it? Primary in our journey is to make the most of our walk with God. It's easy to live carelessly and then neglect our relationship with God. 
Psalm 1, my scripture, says, the person who seeks a solid, productive walk with God is blessed. I'm just going to read a little bit of the psalm. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. So to figure out how to make the most of our walk with God, I'd like to talk about destiny. From the Bible's point of view, and there's a lot of different, if you Google it, ways that destiny is defined, but basically what I found is, the word means God's plan and purpose for his children conceived before we were born. God has a plan and purpose for each of us with assignments laid out for us to accomplish. So what does that mean? Proverbs 20 says, A person's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand their own way? It is the Lord who directs our life, and each step is ordained by God to bring us closer to our destiny. Our destiny spiritually is often defined by what we feel makes a good life, or actions perceived as valuable for our spiritual cause. When we choose to follow our spiritual nature, spiritual character, or true calling, we can begin to shape our future and our destiny. So I took this from some online research, but the point being made here isn't that God drags a person through life without any free choice or any free will. Rather, this proverb notes that God is ultimately in control and we will not always understand the circumstances we face. It's important to know the Lord is leading us and to trust him to direct us, says Proverbs 3. He never leads us astray or allows temptations that are too difficult to endure, says Corinthians 1. And we can't presume to understand such things in the exact same way as God. If we lean too hard on our own judgment, we may go down the wrong path and stumble. Obviously, we know we can't see the future, but we ask God for wisdom and perspective as we experience things. We know he's guiding us, but we do have choices, and we do the best we can, making the best choices we can. So to make the most of our walk with God, I'd like to look at three different directions. First, look around. How are you being influenced? With godly influences or possibly ungodly influences? We're surrounded by so much input that shapes us and determines who we become. I'm going to talk for just a second about ungodly influences. You know, we don't have to teach kids, for instance, to be naughty or say things they shouldn't because what they're exposed to all around them and what they hear in their surroundings often help to shape the behavior. Think about the fact that some people start their day with their horoscope, or maybe they consult with a psychic, which is fine. Some listen to talk shows, but in doing those things, that's often how people get their advice. And of course, then there's Facebook which gives us such wonderful quality information, and that's how people often get their full education. <laughs> and this affects our behavior over time. It can, you know, especially if you're totally dedicated to certain stations I won't mention. mention. Um, but anyway, so I'd like to say that we can move from consulting advice with these various sources to actually identifying with it. We may stop opposing a viewpoint that we would have opposed, but instead start to embrace it, even if it's not moral or positive. First we're listening, but then we may stand where someone else stands. So look around and ask this question, how are we being influenced? Why would millions of dollars be spent on advertising if it didn't influence the toothpaste we buy or the truck we buy or various things that we choose to pick out, cereal, you name it. So we're influenced by what we see in the media, 
But then there's also valuable programming and valuable information and valuable educational options if we choose them. Good influences or godly influences. We can pray and ask the Lord to give us hunger for his word. It's not enough just to read the words from the Bible. There has to be some passages we let get into our thinking that will help shape our thoughts. There are truths that need to be internalized, verses that should become familiar so we know where they are in the Bible, and that way we can express their messages. So, in that sense, we just talked about looking around. Next, let's look inside. And bear with me while I pick up my water. <laughs> All right, let's look inside. Look inside your heart. Look inside where you really live. The person who delights in God's word, who meditates on God's word, will become like a tree planted by the rivers of water, strong, refreshed, and nourished, which is from the psalm that I read. We can choose to be fruitful, someone refreshing to be around, where when one goes away, they're strengthened by your spirit. The fruitful person speaks words that are healing, encouraging, and enlightening. Durable. Can we be durable? The hot winds may blow and the rain does not fall, but the person durable is planted by the rivers of water. He is planted in God's word, and while other people may wither, he remains nourished, strong, and vibrant in faith. Regardless of which way the wind blows, he's planted in the word and meditates in it. Again, referring to the Psalm 1 that I read. Prosperous. We can be prosperous, and I don't mean that in reference to wealth, but more thriving. Whoever he does shall prosper. Does that mean if you delight in God's word and meditate in God's word, you will be like a tree and you will prosper? I would say yes. A good question to ask ourselves is, would I be comfortable right now looking God in the eye? The third direction, now we talked about looking around and looking inside. Now I'd like to throw out the third and final, looking ahead. How do you want to be remembered? What do you want your legacy to be? I'm going to again read just a short paragraph, and this comes from Our Daily Bread and was published in 1994. There is a courthouse in Ohio in a unique location. Raindrops that fall on the north side of the building go into Lake Ontario and the Gulf of St. Lawrence, while those falling on the south side go into the Mississippi River and the Gulf of Mexico. At precisely the point of the peak of the roof, just a gentle puff of wind can determine the destiny of many raindrops. It will make a difference of more than 2,000 miles as to their final destination. The spiritual application here is clear. By the smallest deed or choice of words, we might set in motion influences that could change the course of ours and others' lives here and now and could also affect our destiny. Robert Schuller said, let your hopes, not your hurts, shape your future. And then I say, with God and with hope, your destiny will unfold. Amen. This is the time in our service where we gather around the table together with other Christians around the world to share in communion. And Marshall will give our communion message. Communion, communion hymn this morning is Santo, Santo, Santo.
we'll do the first verse in Spanish, and then everybody joins in on the English verse. This is the time of worship where we unite as one to remember what Christ has done for us. All are welcome to join us in communion because this is the Lord's table and we are here at his invitation. Please join me in prayer. Lord of all creation, you have given us so much as we come together this morning, let us pause a moment and thank you for the many gifts that you have given us, which we easily take for granted. A cool, gentle breeze on a hot summer day, the warmth of the summer sun, the birds singing in our backyards, or the playfulness of a new puppy. Your love and wisdom continues to impact our lives in so many ways, both seen and unseen, when we don't even realize it. May we, as your disciples, extend that same love to others as we encounter them in our daily lives. As we partake of the bread symbolizing his broken body, Help us realize how much courage this must have taken and how great of a sacrifice it was. Help us remember that our true bread, our true source of life, is the living presence of Jesus Christ in our own lives. As we partake of the cup symbolizing his blood shed for the forgiveness of our sins, Help us remember to follow his example and forgive others. It may sound like a simple thing to do, Lord, but sometimes forgiving someone can be the hardest thing in the world. We give thanks for this cup and for the wisdom of the self-giving, self-sustaining, ever-present love that stands behind it. Lord, Help us leave here today strengthened, renewed, and re-energized to be your disciples in a world with many challenges. Help us find strength in each other, but may we also realize that in you alone will we find life, meaning, and sense, for you are the way, the truth, and the life. 
Help us share that message, as well as your promise of unconditional love with those we meet outside these walls this week. May we support and encourage each other in our own faith journeys. Bring us back together again next week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, blessed it, and broke it. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. As you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. Let us share in the bread together. Jesus, in the same way, lifted the cup, blessed it, and said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Let us share in the cup together.
I would like to uh, say that it is an honor and a privilege to be a part of this congregation, and I'm grateful to all of you who came today. As you are able, please stand and join in the singing of the closing hymn. Following the singing and the benediction, you are invited to stay around for um, a personal time of us sharing joys and concerns with each other. Our closing hymn is We Are Walking. accepting spirit to all those when you meet. May God go with you on your journey this week and all of your days. <laughs> 